Washington DC, I um, began with um, rather kind of a traditional approach to linguistic landscape studies, which was a survey of linguistic varieties um, that are represented um, in my data. But then I wanted to find out how this linguistic landscape came about. So I'm very interested in how linguistic landscape as a type of discourse that is shaped by other discourses and the texts and the social interactions that have come before it. So in order to do that, I had to, you know, do ethnography. <laughs> um, so I volunteered in the community center in Chinatown um, for 18 months. So um, as a way um, to be involved in community affairs. Um, so over the 18 months, um, I was volunteering as an ESL teacher for the senior English language class um, Fridays, so working with elderly residents in Chinatown. So that gave me um, really valuable glimpses into how the linguistic landscape of Chinatown was perceived and experienced by ordinary residents in the neighborhood, which I would not be able to gain if I was just collecting the data um, by myself. And um, my um, volunteer role in the community center also opened the doors into community meetings where, for instance, urban planning policies and shops and design uh, were discussed. So I could really see how, um, you know, how the how a sign a single sign came into being, um, and um, that uh, insight into the production process and the complexity of um, you know social actors in the making of a sign uh, was something that I think only ethnography um, would um, allow us uh, to see. So, so yes, I'm, I'm a huge fan of conducting ethnography. I think um, whether you're interested in the production of linguistic landscape or reception of linguistic landscape, um, it is um, really quite essential. Obviously, it's very time consuming and it requires commitment and dedication on the part of the researcher. Um, so I spent 18 months um, in the field, um, getting to know a lot of people and, and doing ethnography. And I don't think that's um, um, only when you're working on ethnography of linguistic landscape, um, as Christian, you're certainly from your own work. Um, but um, I think ethnography in general, um, could feel probably a bit um, kind of unsettling for students who are just beginning on their research project because they seem to be absorbing lots of information, but you're not quite sure how you know, all that information is going to help you address your research questions. So um, it can seem a lot. <laughs> And it can seem quite overwhelming and at the beginning, um, but um, with time and with patience, I think that there are patterns that will start to emerge. And uh, you also, I think, reach a kind of intersubjective understanding of your um, research materials um, that well, yeah, otherwise unavailable to you. So even though there, there are definitely challenges, um, it is, uh, it, it, it is, yeah, a worth, worthwhile. Um, um, also, I think the relationship with the community can be um, 
quite a challenging one as well. So as an outsider, the beginning of the project, you really have to um, build a trust and a rapport um, with the community. And it is also very important to bear in mind that we're not just you know, being extractive and collecting data from the community. Um, we are also um, um, giving back to the community. So that again places demands on the researcher. Um, but I think that it's, it's very important that um, the relationship is um, not simply for their data collection, but uh, um, it's an ongoing one that the researcher has to maintain um, with the people that we do research with. Mm -hmm.